tragedy strikes America. September 2002. Two five-year-old brothers play Spider-Man the movie The Game for the first time. The runtime, just six hours long. Webs don't, don't even, even attach, attach to, to buildings. buildings. Peter auto swings. But then, when the boys were seven years old... Oh my god, it's Spider-Man 2! Look, the webs are attached to the building! And there's physics in the swinging! I feel like Spider-Man! I'm, I'm Spider-Man! Spider I'm Spider-Man! I'm, I'm Spider-Man! Well, no, but I'm Spider-Man. Spider Spider uh, but it's no, no, the game's no, great, but I'm Spider-Man. We rented it, I'm, I'm Spider-Man. I flip the coin, I get to play first, I'm currently Spider-Man. When we were kids, much like every generation since the 60s, Spider-Man was inescapable. Specifically, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. And in 2004, Spider-Man 2 for the PlayStation 2 blew our stupid, idiot, moron, gusher-addicted minds. Finally, there was a game that let you speed through New York City and perfectly replicated the feeling of watching Spider-Man swing on screen. And for the next 12 years, Spider-Man 2 was the gold standard for Spider-Man games. And we're not saying there were no good Spider-Man games since Spider-Man 2. Right. Some of them were great in their own way. Some were more story-focused on Peter and Spider-Man. Some were open-world, but didn't have that iconic swinging that Treyarch made in 2004. And then, in 2016, that game we had been hoping for finally showed itself at PlayStation's E3 show. That game was Spider-Man for the PS4. And it was everything and more we could have asked for. It has a killer story, the swinging mechanics are fun and smooth and satisfying, the combat is great, New York is beautifully made, it's easily one of our favorite games of the generation. But we've been swinging around in Spider-Man PS4 for years now, and some aspects of the 2004 game kept popping up in our memories. So we decided to go back and see how it stacks up against the memories we have of it as kids. So let's get started. For the future of the video, when we say Spider-Man PS2, we're also referring to Spider-Man for the GameCube. They're pretty much the exact same game. We own both of them on disc, but we had to use an emulator to capture the clearest footage we could, so please don't call the cops. Steal it. No, 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 I'm not a criminal. What's really interesting about the story in the game is that Toby, Kirsten Dunst, and Alfred Molina reprised their roles from the movie. What's even more interesting is that Toby and Kirsten are not very good in it. I'm seeing someone now. A guy. Oh. Really? Huh. Really? The game makes some changes to the story in small ways like altered dialogue in some scenes to completely reworking the structure and main characters in others. There are so many hilarious line readings and awkward choreography in this version of the story. <laughs> cheap theatrics today, Cretan. I actually really liked the addition of Black Cat for Peter. I mean, obviously, visually, they made some early 2000s choices to Black Cat. Like what? Uh, you can, uh, your eyes, you could see it. I don't, um, which part specifically are you We, about? let's move on. She gives some really sensible and helpful advice to an extremely toxic relationship between Peter and MJ. It's even more toxic than the movies are. Peter does not care about MJ at all in this game. He can't even be bothered to just remember that she's starring in a play in New York. Mary Jane's play. Maybe I can make it tonight. I can't believe I missed it again. It's not like he's distracted being Spider-Man and there's a big villain and he has to miss her play. He just like forgets and then remembers and is late. Oh no. At my birthday dinner, I promised MJ I would meet her this evening. I gotta hurry. And then he expects her to cancel her engagement for him after showing up to like two things late. Like Peter, what are you doing? But the cool thing about Black Cat during this story is she just keeps reminding Peter like, this is not a relationship that you need. You need one that allows you to be Spider-Man, which is true and they shouldn't be together. That's all I'm saying. Tony, I know 
that you love the chemistry between MJ and Peter in those movies. Sparks fly in Spider-Man 2 <laughs> is all I'm going to say. And in Spider-Man 3, the movie, the sparks fly even more. Those two are great, especially that one scene in the bar where Peter uh, turns and you're like, man, I forgot this is in the movie. Peter just hits MJ in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. In the new Spider-Man game, a lot of people criticize the combat for feeling like a clone of the Arkham series. But after going back and playing the Spider-Man 2 game from 2004, we've realized that it takes more from that game than it ever did from the Arkham series. Yeah, the first thought I had when we played the combat was, oh, this is what they took from. Definitely not right. Arkham. That being said, the combat in this game is so unbelievably violent for Spider-Man. <laughs> First off, you can continue to punch and throw enemies around after they're already knocked out. It's so weird because when you punch them, there's an impact effect on their dead bodies. Oh, sorry. They're knocked out bodies. Right, and while that seems like just a small development mistake, when it comes to Spider-Man, seeing him do that feels so wrong. Especially when he auto-targets a dead body when you're trying to fight someone else, and then he just turns and starts beating someone on the ground. It looks really weird. Yep. Spider-Man is a move where he just throws people up in the air and just forgets gets about him you can just let him fall like fall to the ground and he'll just slam into the concrete right and we think it was for air combos but if you don't go to do the air combo it was my favorite move when i played it they just slam into the ground right. spider-man also has a move called grapple where he can pull people towards him like scorpion and then he holds them by their neck in the air and like chokes them like a psychopath their legs are kicking while it's happening it's so violent help oh Aside from Spider-Man's psychotic rage, the button combos are actually really fun to execute. The dodging doesn't work very well, especially when you get overwhelmed, it really shows its age. Overall, I know people liked the combat when it came out and we didn't hate it, but it does feel dated when you play it. Just move you out of the road. I, I wanna be respectful, I know. I'm so, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I just wanna save you from the road. I'm so sorry, I just don't want you to get by, hit by a car. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Now, of course, if we're comparing old games to the standards we have now, most likely graphics will always age worse than something like gameplay or story. With that being said though, some games hold up better than others because of their unique art style that might have just kind of worked and still work now. But when something goes for realism, it's not gonna age great. And the open world looks worse than it we looks remember. It, it, looks, looks like, it looks pretty it looks like bad. Shit. Uh, that's to be expected from a PS2 game from 2004, but the memory of our seven-year-old brains seemed photorealistic and booting up the game immediately kind of gave a feeling of like, oh, that's not how I remembered it. The open world clearly suffers because of the limitations of the hardware. There's only a handful of people. It's like the same eight repeat repeating people throughout the city. And none of them have mouths. They just talk out of their blank face. However, once you start to upgrade your moves and your swing speed, traversing the city is super fun and exactly what we remember. It's basically making you go fast enough that the city becomes a backdrop you don't notice as much, so it looks better. Much like Spider-Man PS4, most of the side missions are random pop-up crimes that cycle through a pre-made pool that is very limited. Some side missions are sought out and some pop up random on the spot, which I just have to say, New York City has a major balloon problem. And we should just, all these kids that are losing their balloon. I'm just saying, we put them on a ferry and we Spider-Man homecoming the ferry. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you want to split it in half? I didn't say I want to split it in half. I said I wanted to Spider-Man homecoming the ferry. Mm. Which is different. There's Which a major different. difference because in that way, I'm not saying what I want to happen. But I'm saying what I want to happen. Spider-Man PS4 was clearly inspired by the side missions from this game, and you can see the parallels including the car chases. You swing through the city, chasing the cars, and then jump on them. What I love in Spider-Man PS4 though is that you web up the criminals and take them out of the car, but in this game you just punch the hood of the car until they get so you annoyed they stop. bash the shit out of their car until they get out. Hey, pull over. 
this is where the PS2 missions can feel the most dated because like after 20 minutes of playing, you've pretty much played every variety of pop-up side mission yeah. and there's none to seek out to play that are higher quality except for one very special group of side missions. Pizza time. Normally, we would hate time trials. Me and Eddie do not like being timed. We like doing right. things at our own pace. But that stupid fucking pizza time music mixed yep. with the fun of swinging a Spider-Man is just pure joy. It's just, it's ecstasy. However, as the missions get harder, the lack of polish in the swinging compared to a newer game like Spider-Man PS4 really shows, and pizza time gets so frustrating. I can't tell you the amount of times that I had a pizza time fail live on stream because I hit like a small artifact of a building or Peter accidentally grabbed onto the wrong thing. <laughs> can't believe I got washed all the way over here. So obviously, swinging is the most important aspect of a Spider-Man game. And when Spider-Man PS4 came out in 2018, it was so fun and fluid and the swinging mechanics were super smooth. There's almost no learning curve to it. Anybody can pick it up and play Spider-Man. It should be that way. Spider-Man is for everyone. He should be playable by everyone. Peter auto runs on walls. He auto zips around corners. He vaults over objects. He auto jumps at the top of his swings and he doesn't get hurt by falling falling off of a building, which keeps things moving. Which is great, but as people who like to master certain game mechanics, this also makes the swinging a bit shallow sometimes in how fast you can swing and cool moves that you can do. Spider-Man 2 doesn't have any of those kind of hand-holding mechanics. And before playing the game, we were swinging around in Spider-Man 4 for years thinking, oh man, if only they'd give us the control they gave us in Spider-Man 2. There are a lot of times where we would just be swinging on our own PlayStations and talking about the old Spider-Man game. And we were sort of right, but a lot wrong in putting it on a pedestal. Yeah. Like we said before, this game was groundbreaking, but when you're swinging, you're constantly hitting into walls and you're constantly being stopped by buildings because of the way the swinging mechanics don't hold your hand at all. There's no automation to stop you from colliding into a building. But this is where we get kind of conflicted because it can be very frustrating, I would say maybe like 70% of the time. And then there's a 30% of the time where having that control can be really fun. Like for example, we said in Spider-Man PS4, he auto wall runs, but in this game, you have to hold the sprint button and then click the wall climb button and kind of do this little combo. But when you're flying through the city and then you hit this combo and Peter runs and then jumps and does a twist off a building, it feels a lot more satisfying to do it yourself. Also, and they need to add this to the next Spider-Man game for PS5, you can click the left trigger, which is the sprint button, to speed up your velocity while you're in the swing. And something about that really makes you kind of feel the physics of Peter swinging forward on a web. So overall, we would love some options in the next Spider-Man game that let you switch to a more advanced swinging type. We'd like a middle ground between those or being able to choose how advanced we want the swinging to be. Right, because we want it to have a tiny bit more depth, like Spider-Man PS4 swinging is definitely way better, but we also want it to be accessible for everybody. The bosses in this game are not very good. No. No, they are not. They, they are pretty, pretty rough. It's really cool that there are a couple of iconic Spider-Man bosses in this game, but it just does not feel fun to fight them. Almost all of these bosses take place indoors, and the camera completely fails indoors. I cannot see inside. Also, in the last Shocker fight, which is like the third to last level, the game informs you that you can lock on oh, for the first God. time. I'm pretty sure. Doc Ock, the main villain in the game, apparently can have his claws webbed up, but they tell you that in a moment where you're getting shot at by a bunch of people. So if you miss it, you'd never know for the final boss fight. And it's so frustrating. When you get hit, you ragdoll, which is fine. Except Spider-Man takes an annoying amount of time to recover. So when a lot of shit is going on, sometimes you're just getting hit more and more and you can't even do anything.
Overall, we had a lot of fun with Spider-Man 2. It was a fun game to play. Yeah, it obviously has some things that are dated, some things about it that were not so good at the time, but it definitely is a fun playthrough of an old game. And the swinging is how we remember it. It is really fun. It just can get annoying at times. Do we hate this game? Absolutely not. It is very no. near and dear to our hearts from our childhood, mm -hmm. and it was fun to play. But does it hold up compared to a game like Spider-Man 2018 that took a lot of aspects of it and made it much better? No, no it doesn't no. really hold up that well. But I would give it like a medium hold up. It was still fun. I would, I would ask people to play it. So we would rate it a... Yeah, yeah, it'll, yeah, right. it holds yeah, up. Okay. Which uh, in text that doesn't really, we can't really put a clean out of ten number on that. So it got a yeah out of yeah. ten. <laughs> <laughs> That's good.